Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I am going to be sharing with you some products that I have been using and repurchasing for years, okay? Believe it or not, in this crazy bye 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 new 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 world, there are products in this video who have hung around, who stuck it out with me over like seven, eight years and they have never been replaced, they've never been kicked out, they've always been in my makeup rotation, they've been in my top drawers for years and years, for a long time. And that should be applauded in 2024 in this extremely replace, repurchase, new, new, new all of the time industry. These products have stuck with me through thick and thin. So I think we should applaud them, I think we should celebrate it. I'm gonna share them with you. These products have made it with me for years. So let's dive into it. Okay, so first up, we're gonna get the boring one out of the way because you all know what it is going to be. It's the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation. I have been using this foundation for over four years now, four years for a foundation. And I feel like foundations in the last two to three years, especially have come a very long way. And we've had many, many new releases in the foundation category that I like, in this more natural, glowy, luminous, medium coverage category, to try to take this one's crown, and it hasn't happened yet. It's still on top spot, and it not only has been in my life for over four years, it's been top foundation spot for that entire time. Never been beaten, never been replaced. I have repurchased like four or five bottles of this at this point, even though it lasts so long and you need such a small amount, it is my holy grail. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Isn't it being discontinued, Charlotte? We don't know. We just don't know what's going on with this. It's possible it's being discontinued or heaven forbid, maybe even worse than that, reformulated. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, okay? I've got several bottles. It's not an immediate concern for me because I'm stocked up, but maybe it will be the year that this gets replaced, but through no fault of its own. I think for once you find a foundation that is just perfect, it's really hard to use anything else, and I really don't use anything else when I'm off camera. I try to use other foundations on camera because you guys wanna see something else and something less expensive. But for me, in my everyday life, it's this or nothing, this or nothing. Now, this next product has been in my life for almost three years now, three years in June. This bad boy, it came into my life. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Invisible UV Flawless Primer. I've spoken to you guys about this many, many times. Another product you're sick to death of me talking about, but it's that good. I've repurchased this at least twice and I've also been gifted a couple and I'm never without it. This one is feeling alarmingly light. I use it so much. No makeup days, I'm getting SPF from it. I'm getting a gorgeous glow and luminosity to the skin. It tones down my redness. It keeps my skin happy when I'm in the swimming, but not in the swimming pool at the side of the swimming pool. Witnessing some of the worst butterfly you might ever hope to see in your life, as well as some very questionable life-saving lessons. If I have no makeup on, my skin can get very, very angry, but I'm wearing this, it keeps it happy, it keeps it hydrated, it keeps my redness a little toned down while I'm there, so I don't look like some kind of baby over the clown. I absolutely love this stuff. It's also really comes into its own on holiday. It's so travel friendly and I love wearing this in the evenings if I'm doing my makeup and then going out for dinner, but UV is still UVing. I know that this is gonna keep everything nice and protected while still being a great primer. I love her, I will repurchase it. I don't feel like there's anything similar like it on the market with this high level of SPF that does what this does to my skin and works so nicely under makeup as well as on its own. Keep it coming. Next up, not strictly speaking a makeup item. It's the MAC Lip Scrubtious. This is so underrated. It's underrated by myself, even though I love it so much. This has got to have been my sixth or seventh one of these. This is a lip scrub. I know, a very boring item, but I have been repurchasing this for nearly seven years. Seven years, I have gone through so many of them. I have also tried dozens of other lip scrubs and I always come back to this. Nothing has ever beaten it. I've tried much more expensive lip scrubs. I've tried lip scrubs from many other different brands. 
different varieties and I always come back to this one. It's always better than anything else I've ever tried. I don't know why I tried anything else. I gave it a go, okay? I tried to, you know, branch out. It can't be done, it can't be beaten. It's just perfect. You know, in the winter especially, I get very, very dry, flaky lips. I do a lot of lip swatching. That really angers my lips as well and dries them out. And my lips need a lot of TLC, you know? Poor little things. So they can get really flaky. And this is just the perfect amount of aggression in a lip scrub, you know? It's really getting in there and slothing everything off, but it's not painful, it doesn't hurt my lips, it doesn't make them sore or sensitive, but it's it's really doing the job. Some of these can be a bit too harsh, a bit too large and like hard of a grain in the scrub. Some of them just do nothing because they're not hard enough. You know, this is the perfect sweet spot. It also melts into an oil. So again, some of them you have to wipe away when you're finished, which is quite annoying because typically I do my skincare in bed and I'm not getting up for anybody until it's done. So the fact that this sort of dissolves into like a, an oil, so it's like a, a lip oil and a scrub in one and I don't have to wipe it all off of my face and the vanilla uh, flavor especially is delicious and delightful yes sometimes I taste it okay what can I say it's just amazing by the way elephant in the room this is what I'm dealing with after filming my Charlotte Tilbury tanning drops <laughs> whoops you can see where I wiped off the demonstration on my hand but I did not pay any attention to the knuckle area or my wrist where my bracelets were and <laughs> perfect. It's the best lip scrub there is. I'll die on that hill. Another little Tom Ford complexion product. They just smash the complexion out of the park every time. Now this is a baby in this video. This has only been in my life for two years but this is my third one I think and I'll repurchase this as long as it is available. I pray for forever but again who knows what's going on with Tom Ford, they're, they're up to something. Could be being reformulated, could be de being discontinued. This is the best primer I've ever found. And although it's only been two years and counting, it's been quite a bit of repurchasing and use. I really have not used another primer since I discovered this one, unless I'm just trying a new one out. I always go back to it. I don't know why I wouldn't, it's just perfect perfect, flawlessly smooth, yet not dried out or too mattified, keeps oils at bay around the nose area, smooths and refines everything, extends the life of foundation, perfect base for foundation. Why would I use another one? You know, it's so flattering, it's so perfect. It's the perfect canvas for the more glowy foundations that I love because it's just got that bit of balance. It's so reliable, it's so travel friendly. I absolutely love it. It's one of the younger items in this video, but I still feel like two years and multiple repurchases worth celebrating, you know? Next up, we have a little combo from Pat McGrath. The concealer and powder from Pat McGrath I have been repurchasing for over four years. Some of these dates are alarming me because I've checked them all and I've looked them all up when they were released. And I'm alarmed that this was four years ago, okay? And there's more alarming numbers to come, trust me. I purchased the powder in every shade. I've purchased the concealer in like three or four shades and I've repurchased my most used shades multiple times, okay? This concealer and powder were my holy grail for most of those four years. The powder has literally only just been toppled by the Givenchy loose powder, but it's still one I use very, very frequently. It's still probably the one that I would travel with because it's just smaller and easier to do that. But it's just such a smooth, flawless, forgiving powder on the under eye area. I'm 40, okay, 40 years old. Powders better step up or they're not coming near my under eyes. <laughs> No, thank you. They've got to be silky and light and flattering and refining and kind. And this one is absolutely amazing. It's really only been pipped by the Givenchy because the Givenchy has the extra brightening. And if you hear the rumors, probably by the time this video goes up, it won't be a rumor, it'll be a fact. There's a pink shade of Pat McGrath powder coming. Who knows, it, it could be back in the running for that top spot. The concealer also has been pipped off of top spot in the last year or so. So many great concealers came out in the last couple of years, but it is still in my top drawer. It's still in my top rotation of concealers. It still works for me 
it's still one that I want to keep in my collection. Four years on, fair play to you, Pat McGrath. Next up, the mascara that I'm wearing today. And I think just looking at it, it speaks for its, this hair, what? Go away, be gone. Don't make me pluck you out, because I will do it. I think this mascara speaks for itself. You already know if you're not new here what this mascara is. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes Mascara. This has been my holy grail since the first time I used it almost four years ago. How is it? How has it been four years? I think I know what happened here. I think like at least two of those years didn't count because of the C word, okay? That, that's what happened here. Four years with this mascara. I don't even know how many tubes I've been through. It's got to be coming up to 10. It's got to be. The amount of times I've repurchased this. I also was gifted a couple. I've been through so many, despite how long it actually lasts. And I've also tried so many amazing mascaras, the new Lisa Eldridge, the uh, several from Benefit have come out in that time that I've loved, the Huda Beauty mascaras. So many amazing mascaras have come out since this one launched. It's never been toppled from top spot. I have found many that I love, but this one just always, it always just mm, slightly tickles my pickle a little more than the others because it gives me that spiky, separated, dramatic lash that I love. It's so easy to use on lower lashes. It, the tube lasts so long and it performs beautifully from the first to the last use. I think it's such a great mascara. I love the effect. It gives me that wide open Bambi lashes, but with that spiky separated look that I really, really love gets every single last lash. I love her, I've loved her for almost four years. I don't understand what's happened. Next up, we're going to talk about the Hourglass palettes. Now, I don't know if this counts, but I'm including it, okay? This is my video, I'm gonna make the rules and break them however I like, okay? And no one can stop me because it's too late, all right? This was filmed days ago, so you're too late. I've done it now. What are you gonna do, kill me? You'd have to catch me first, I'm like a whippet. So I have been repurchasing these palettes or purchasing these palettes almost every year for, I think, six years. I think this one, which is the Unlocked, the original Unlocked Ambient Lighting Edit, yes, that's her name, don't wear it out. I think this was holiday 2018, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think this was my first ever Hourglass holiday pack. Was it the first ever? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. Someone tell me. Help. This was my first and not my last, okay? I've purchased them almost every single year, multiple ones of them now that, you know, this was back in the day when we only got one. Now we're getting three, right? Three and a bonus owl these days is what we're working with. But back in the day, six years ago, we only got one. And I have just never disappointed by these. Sometimes I'm slightly disappointed by the repeats that we get these days, but the actual products themselves, these are always just one of my most exciting launches of the year. I always look forward to seeing what they're gonna do, what they're going to be like. They've been getting better and better each year with their inclusivity and their sort of newness of it all. I really am praying this is gonna be the year that we get four. We, we get a lot more new, but I'm also praying that Hourglass start listening to our prayers and give us some of these blush shades in singles. This shade in here, which I think is called Nude Nude Glow, this, this blush here, the blush that I'm wearing today, it's my favorite ever Hourglass blush, and I'm scared to use it because I have this tiny lip. This is better than any other Hourglass blush. It's so perfect, that lighter but buildable nude. It's probably not gonna show up on my very, very tanned little hand there. Yeah, it does. With a little bit of building, this is just a hideous crime, I can't tell you. But it's so beautiful, the perfect glowy nude. I love the formulas in here. They always just really feel like such a treat as well, especially because they come, you know, as a holiday launch. It feels very gifty, even if it's a gifty to your selfie. <laughs> what's happening. Oh, I've loved these since the first moment I met them. I can't imagine like not wanting one each year. And I know that not everybody gets, you know, wanting them and buying them every year, but I feel like a lot of us do. A lot of us get it. A lot of us love them. If you are a cheek palette kind of person like I am, they just, 
they get you right in the feels, right in the gizzards, and you just want more, even though you might already have half of the colours in here. They're just always delightful, aren't they? Six years I've been rocking with these palettes and no sign of slowing down now. But as I said, they have been improving each year as far as inclusivity, but they've never quite smashed it out of the park. I think we need four, okay, to get it absolutely amazing. And I'd love to see, aside from the finishing powders, which frankly you could just remove them and I'd be happy. But aside from the finishing powders, I'd love this to be the year where every blush, bronzer and highlight in the palettes is brand new, like we would love that. Take the finishing powders out, we've got them, we've got six years worth of them, okay? But if you must put them in, I understand their skin tone powders, they can be the same if you'd like, but give us new blush, highlight and bronzer shades, we just live for it, and also give us it all in singles. Also, Jesus, also give us customizable ones where we can choose. My dog's going nuts. <sighs> also give us them customizable, okay? And I don't mean choosing the owl to go on the front. I mean, give us a range of bronzers, blushes, highlights and finishing powders and let us choose what goes in the palette. I feel like that's where we're going next. Let's do that. Next up, I can't believe, when I looked this up, I can't believe this, but I have been purchasing Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, particularly the matte formula, which I believe came first, I think, for five and a half years. How can that be? How can that be? I looked it up, I've checked, okay? Her first launch of Velvets was November 2018. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like her first ever product, her Velvet Mats, November 2018. It's unhinged. How can that be? Five and a half years, okay? And oh my gosh, they still to this day, they can't be beaten. For a matte bullet lipstick, they can't be beaten. And I was thinking to myself, what is it about these lipsticks that we just go so nuts for? I know that they're so silky, they're so opaque, they're so creamy, they're so light and comfortable to wear, they're so long wearing. All of the above, the beautiful components, all of that comes into it, as well as the fact that we all absolutely adore Lisa herself. And it's nice to support a nice, amazing person who's very, very talented and good at what she does. But do you know what I think makes these lipsticks so special that I am still like looking on her website and there's no new shades currently, as in new released shades. There hasn't been any for a while in the Velvet formula. I'm still looking on her website like what haven't I, which of these haven't I got because I want new ones regardless of the fact they aren't brand new, you know, releases. I think what it is, it's the colour theory. Lisa is just so obsessed with colours and pigments and she's so inspired by everything that she sees that she just puts, she bottles memories somehow in lipstick colours. You know, every one of her lipsticks has a story and they're so unique. And yes, they might be a red or they might be a nude or they might be a berry or a rosy shade, but then they're so nuanced and they're so clever and they're so flattering. So many times I've bought lipstick shades that I know for a fact I don't like. They won't work on me. They won't flatter me. I won't like it, but I've bought a few for review purposes. And then lo and behold, every single one of them flatters me more than any other lipstick I've ever put on my face or, you know, on my lips specifically. She's just so clever at getting the absolute perfect undertone and perfect shade. And I just love everything about them. I feel like they're so surprising. And yes, the formula is absolutely unreal, but the colors for me are the thing that is special about them because there's just so many nuanced shades in there, so many unique shades in a land where you think unique lipstick shades can't exist anymore, how could it be? They're always a little bit different. They're always a little bit more flattering. They're always a little easier to wear for me. And I will continue to buy more and more and more of them for years to come. We're five and a half years into our love story with Lisa Aldridge and I cannot believe it. These started it all so special you know and next up a range of eyeshadow palettes another slight cheat but like i said my rules okay my my channel my video my rules and i won't accept any slandering around here but it's pat mcgrath's motherships this is which one do i use today sunlit seduction is the one that i used today so this is the one that everybody hated because it was pink and it was like the third <laughs> 
one that was pink and it also had no proper special shades so everyone was furious at it but I still loved it and I still wanted to buy it. I own almost all, not all, but almost all of the motherships. I think I'm missing two from my collection and I didn't purchase my first ever one when they first launched. I couldn't even really work that out. Someone tell me the year that the first ever mothership launched. I, I had a look, I couldn't really work it out. I couldn't find a definitive start but I bought my first mothership about six years ago and my first ever was mothership five and that was six years ago so they've got to have been going for like nearly 10 years and you know I've bought every one every year since in one way or another sometimes I wait for a, an imminent sale as there's always one sometimes I buy them at launch depending on how much they speak to me but oh my goodness like a, like I've said before very much like the hourglass holiday palettes I've just never been disappointed. They always just wow me. I always just get so much joy out of them. They're so luxurious. They're just so pretty. And if you just love makeup because you love playing with pretty things and sparkle like I do, oh, I absolutely love them. I'm always so excited. And I know a lot of us have been a little disappointed in recent years about the repetitive nature of the colour stories of these motherships. Whenever Pat starts teasing a new mothership, oh, be still my beating heart out of my chest. I am beside myself to see what it's gonna look like. I immediately know I'm gonna need it because I love them so much. They give me so much makeup joy. And isn't that what it's all about? These are for sure one of the items out of my entire collection that I get the most joy out of. And that's what I really love. And that's why they've been in my life. Even though I was late to the party, for six years, I've been loving them. They've been my favorite palettes. Every time a new one comes along that becomes my favorite mothership, that's my favorite eyeshadow palette of all time. I don't know how they can get any more exciting, but I'm really hoping that Pat has been listening to the feedback, which she does typically do. Sometimes she is a little slow to react to it, but she does typically listen to what we're asking for. So I'm, I'm giving her one more chance, okay? I'm sure the next mothership is not going to be pink heavy. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm really hopeful this next one is going to be very exciting and just what the people have been asking for. But I mean, I'm a pinky. I mean, I like all of these pinky purpley tones anyway, so I'm never really mad about them, but uh, they just give me so much joy. Six years of loving these palettes. That's a long time, you know. A long time to stay at the top of my eyeshadow palette list, as well as the top of my joy giving list, okay? And finally, the item, the makeup item I have been purchasing for the longest out of my entire collection, a solid, at least, I've got to say at least a solid 10 years of Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. Oh my, how, how I don't know how that can be right. I don't know how I can be old enough to have been purchasing any lipsticks for 10 years, because I'm sure I'm like 18, <laughs> roughly. And eight is too young to buy lipsticks, so something's gone wrong here, and I'm, gonna write a strongly worded letter about it. But especially her creamier kissing lipsticks, her more satin lipsticks. I also love her superstar lipsticks. I've been buying those for years. I wish she'd give us more colors in those, but uh, whenever Charlotte releases lipsticks, I know some people are fed up with seeing peachy tones, but because that is literally what I live for, I'm never mad about it. I give me them all, give me all the peachy nudes. I can never get enough of them. I love them probably even more than Charlotte Tilbury does. I don't know if that's possible. I'm such a big Charlotte Tilbury fan. I have drawers full of her lipsticks, her mattes, her kissing, her superstar, her liquid lips, her glosses. I have drawers of every single one of her lipsticks that she's ever released. I always love them. If it's a shade I like, I'm all over it. I know I'm going to love them. I always love the colors. I always find them super wearable. I love both of her main matte and more satin formulas. I just, they're just so beautiful and I adore the bullets. They just really tickle my pickle. This whole brand, Charlotte Tilbury is a brand, very much like Lisa Eldridge, is just a brand that really speaks to me. It just, they align with all of my preferences, you know, the type of makeup I like, the colors that I like, 
Both of those brands really speak to me and represent what I'm looking for in makeup and what I love and what stirs my loins and gets my heart pumping out my chest. Those two brands do it like no other. And Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, much like Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, always get the blood pumping. It's been a very long love affair that never looks like ending. 10 years of buying this brand's lipsticks, okay? That's unbelievable, isn't it? So think how many brands have come along in that time, how many new lipstick formulas have come along in that time, and I still want to buy more of those. That's pretty impressive in 2024. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the 10 makeup products that I have been buying for the longest. I beg you, let me know what is your longest love affair with a makeup item. What have you been repurchasing for seven, eight, 10, five years and show no signs of stopping? Please let me know. I feel like this is such a interesting way of seeing actually these products that really stand the test of time that hold up against all of these new and young contenders you know science and formulas move on and improve all the time but these products that we have been buying for five six more years are still beating out these brand new formulas and formulations and new developments with new technology and new ingredients and new methods, they are still in our drawers and we're still wanting to purchase more of them. That's That says a lot about these products and that's what I look for. I want products that we're gonna love in two, three years time. We're gonna use up because we enjoy them and they don't just get beaten into oblivion within a few weeks you know these are the products that i really want to find that give us our whole money's worth that are we invest in but we get all of the use out of it because they just never disappoint us let me know what yours are in the comment section down below but i hope you enjoyed this video and i would love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.